Do you love movies but don't have a ton of time to watch them? Fear no more. I have over 50 movie recommendations that are 90 minutes or less and four honorable mentions that are just a tick over 90 minutes. All of these recommendations are at least great or better in my eyes. They also range in popularity from the likes of The Nightmare Before Christmas, Perfect Blue, and spoiler for one honorable mention, Halloween to the more obscure like The Taking of Power by Louis XIV, The Gollum, How He Came Into the World, and Bullet Ballet. Though, or through, this list, I hope to introduce you to some amazing movies, show you some new directors, and even guide you towards videos that I have already made, maybe gonna make in the future, to explore these films. Starting hot with some honorable mentions, we have Kids by Larry Clark, Through a Glass Darkly by Igmar Bergman, the aforementioned Halloween by John Carpenter, and Doctor Strangelove by Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick, which clock in at 91, 91, 91, and 95 minutes, respectively. If you're like me and have a busy schedule of pickleball and talking to your girlfriend and have very little time outside of work besides those activities, I would recommend making room for the extra five you will need for Dr. Strangelove, as it's arguably the best mentioned of those I just mentioned, but all of them are masterpieces. Dr. Strangelove is a dry yet cutting satire of the outrageousness of the relations between the US and Russia during the Cold War with tremendous writing and performances. Halloween is clearly the cult classic horror film featuring Michael Myers as the titular villain. Kids is a more obscure cult classic that brilliantly displays inner city youth challenges growing up in the 90s and is a film I've done a deep dive on with Matt on my channel if you want to hear more. Same goes for Halloween and Dr. Strangelove is mentioned on my Stanley Kubrick ranked videos. Yes, videos plural. Through a Glass Darkly is by the legend Igmar Bergman and covers mental illness in a remarkably bleak yet insightful way considering the era it was released. Now, to the actual 90 minute or less movies, I'll start with the first tier, that being great, and also horror movies uh, because there are quite a lot of them on this list. I frequent the horror genre like a streetwalker does bars, so it was bound that there would be some on this list, but if, but if I've learned anything through watching over a thousand films, it is that horror can ball out with a shorter runtime. The films included in this tier within a tier is The Beyond 1981, The Invisible Man 1933, Frankenstein 1931, The Wolf House 2018, The Bride of Frankenstein 1935, The Nightmare Before Christmas 1993, Wreck 2007, The Invasions of or Rather, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1956, Army of Darkness, 1992, The Addiction, 1995, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974, and Mad God, 2021. The Beyond is currently my favorite Lucio Fulci film, who is a well-respected Italian horror director. My dad hated this film, so it's definitely not for everyone, but it is strange yet interesting for me. I should say that The Invisible Man, Frankenstein, and Bride of Frankenstein are all covered on a deep dive podcast I did with Ethan on my channel, so check that out if you need more info on these famous classic horror films. And while we're at it, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon because I love film, you do too. To give a short but sweet pitch, they are classic horror films for a reason, and these stand out amongst those films. Also, The Wolf House is a strange little claymation stop motion film that Matt and I reviewed on a deep dive podcast, so check that out if you've seen it and want to hear more about it, or if you're not sold on that idea alone. Matt and I also did a deep, deep dive on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that you should check out if you've never seen or, again, have seen 
and want to hear a deeper analysis about it. That leaves The Nightmare Before Christmas untouched, and it's one of the most iconic family-friendly horror films. It has all the macabre pageantry, but isn't scary um, in a way that will like frighten children too much. Wreck is a foreign found footage film, which I will pause so that you can say that five times fast yourself. It's one of the best found footage films I've seen, so check it out if you're into that. And I, and I think, I mean, it's, it's definitely up there with uh, Blair Witch Project. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a good sci-fi horror film that does well to address some of the bigger social fears going on during the time period in which this film was released, that being the Cold War again. Army of Darkness is the third and most bombastic of the Evil Dead trilogy. Spoiler alert, the other two within the Evil Dead trilogy are in this list. Yes, they are all less than 90 minutes. And I have a whole Evil Dead franchise video, deep dive, that you should watch if you need to hear more of a sales pitch as to why you should watch it. It's one of the most ambitious horror trilogies to ever exist. Next, The Addiction is the first Abel Ferreira film I have seen, and it goes much deeper ideology or ideologically than maybe any other monster film has ever done before. I'm, I'm being purposely vague. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm referring to. I'm being vague just so it's... Uh, it's a surprise for you as well when you watch it. Last from this group is Mad God, which is Phil Tippett's tremendous stop motion horror picture, which is one of the best of its kind and one of the coolest horror films I've ever seen. It shows so much love and affection that as a horror fan, I can't help but eat that stuff up. The next uh, picture is a four star but not horror and that is Fantastic Planet. This is a really unique animated movie that has neat animation but wins you over with its themes. The Color of Pomegranates is next, which is hard to grasp what it's trying to communicate, but one of the most beautiful films ever made. I would highly recommend it to those who like art house films, but you, if you know you dislike art house films, uh, I would also steer you clear of it. Rope by Alfred Hitchcock is next. Where are my cockheads at? This is a tight and supremely executed flick. If you like Hitchcock and haven't seen this, you must. And if you haven't seen any of his films, I'd argue this is as good as any place to start. Next is Elephant 2003, which is one of the most haunting pictures I have ever seen. It depicts a massacre, much like Columbine, but the everyday nature and banality of it all makes it feel all too real, and made me feel sickened by the reality that this is a, I guess you could even say common occurrence in America. The Young and the Damned is next. Matt and I also covered this picture, so check that out. Bunel is a more difficult director to crack with what he's presenting, his infamous short film being a prime example of this, but I find this film in particular to be fairly accessible and would have to definitely be the current movie I would point newbies towards if they're interested in trying out Bunel's films. The Passion of Joan of Arc is next, and it is one of the most important and famous silent films made. Uh, this film doesn't need sound to move you to your core. If you want to watch more silent films, if you're interested in Carl Theodore Dreyer, any of those two, this is the recommendation for you. Next is Blackfish, a documentary which I find to be really interesting, if also really sad. I'd heard pieces of information that I think came from this documentary before, but you'll completely be anti-Sea World come end of this documentary. Vivre Sa Vie is next by good old Godard. 
Godard is another filmmaker whose pictures aren't immediately accessible. However, this and Breathless, another film that is one of my 90 minutes or less recommendations, are covered in detail by myself and Matt. Get used to it. We've covered a lot of films, and you probably haven't seen those videos yet. And I don't know what you're doing. You should. If you want to branch out and try something new cinematically, these two, that being Viva Sa V and Breathless, are the films for you to check out. Up next, we have High Noon. This is a nice, tight Western. So if you dig Westerns, you'll love this. The Killing is next, which is in my Stanley Kubrick ranked video. It doesn't get enough respect or it doesn't get the respect it deserves because of how good Kubrick's other films are. But this is among his greats. Uh, Kubrick really only has two films that are not up to the level of quality that like everyone kind of assumes from him. And it's his I think it's his first two films. Everything else is is tremendous. The Killing is definitely uh, one of those such examples, which takes me to Paths of Glory, which is Stanley Kubrick's highest rated feature on Letterboxd, which I think kind of speaks for itself. I mean, you like Kubrick and you haven't seen this yet. You really gotta. The Gollum is next, which is a German expressionism film that is in a trilogy with one of the first feature length horror films. Me and Ethan did a video on that. Check it out. This is one for the film historians that are looking to get a taste of German expressionism. Next is Largent, made by Robert Brisson. If you are wanting to dive deeper in your own cinematic journey, it should be said that Brisson is favorited by a lot of prolific directors, especially those within the French New Wave Godard, aforementioned, being one of the French New Wave directors. I haven't, seen a, I haven't seen a ton of films in the French New Wave, but if you're really into that, uh, foreign pictures and how everything kind of influenced each other, Brisson is the dude you got to check out, and I really liked Largent. Brief Encounter is next, which is a brilliant little romance from David Lean, who has made some masterpieces that are a bit on the longer side. And so if you're strapped for time, I'd recommend this as a sampler to see if you would want to devote that much time for his longer pieces. But I think in all likelihood, this film will only encourage you to watch more of him. I kind of went the other direction. I watched uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai and I watched Lawrence of Arabia. And then decided, hey, you know, on one of my work days, hey, this is a 90 minute or less David Lean movie. Let's check it out. And I was very pleasantly surprised by how good it was, despite the first two not being romance and this one being romance. Next up is a trifecta of Shinya Sakamoto films, Bullet Ballet, Tokyo Fist and Kotoko which I've been dying to talk about and partially inspired me making this list in the first place. Sakimoto is a unique bird when it comes to filmmaking, and all of these films are great examples of this. His special effects are insane, and the violence is often over the top. Bullet Ballet is perhaps the best story, Kotoko being one of the creepiest for the lead actress's performance, and very harrowing, and Tokyo Fist being my personal favorite of this three. Tokyo Fist to me seems to have more ele uh, Tokyo Fist to me seems to have more elements from what I would imagine Tetsuya Iron Man has. Though I'm waiting for a day that I'm really strapped for time to watch that film. So take that with a grain of salt. But from what I've seen of that, and I've watched movie reviews, Spooky Rice did a cover of uh, Tetsuya Iron Man, um, had some snippets of clips in there. It does seem like there are little elements of that mixed in the Tokyo Fist, and I really like that. So I'm excited to watch Iron Man. Uh, do yourself a favor, watch these immediately, especially if you're looking for something different 
and you fall into the strap for time category. These three films, they were all, you know, they're only in the great category, which like I say, like it's no big deal to be a great film. Uh, it's a miracle if a film isn't bad, quite frankly. But if you're looking for something different and you don't mind foreign films, check those out because uh, I really like them. Next, we have a trio of Orson Welles films, The Lady from Shanghai, The Magnificent Ambersons, and F for Fake. As it stands, I like these least best to best in order I said them, meaning F for Fake is my favorite of those three, Ambersons second, Lady from Shanghai third, though, again, they're all great. F for Fake is a doc unlike any other. The Magnificent Ambersons is an amazing and tragic romance. The Lady from Shanghai has Orson doing an Irish accent and follows great themes of the ruthlessness that comes with greed. Next, we have religious themes coming from The Virgin Spring and Viridiana from the likes of previously mentioned Igmar Bergman and Louis Bunel. Both explore the darker sides of human nature that brings us to question, I guess, the will and the power of God, maybe. I mean, I think it could lead you to question that, but that's just me. Next is an oft-misunderstood film, An Enemy, by Denis Villeneuve. I cannot implore you enough to watch this film and then check out my analysis of this film afterwards as it will clear up so much of the confusion surrounding the meanings of this film it's very very easy to come out of that film a disliking it because you're you're like what the hell was that but once you understand it or at least once i understood all the symbolism and what everything was supposed to mean or like what was actually being unveiled, then I really liked it. Next, we have The Big Heat and Laura by Fritz Lang and Otto Preminger, respectively. Both are noir detective films, and both are absolutely tremendous and hold up exceptionally well. Both are must-sees if you're looking to dip your toes into older films and like crime stories. The final film in the great tier is The Taking of Power by Louis XIV by Roberto Rossellini. If you like Barry Lyndon, I feel you will appreciate this film. Looking at it as a character study of Louis is what makes this film very interesting to me, though it's a slow starter. The remaining films are all masterpieces and can't be denied. The films I mentioned before... Maybe you have some bugaboos about them, some picadillos as to why you don't want to watch them. That's all well and good, but these remaining films are must-watches. Starting with Perfect Blue, we have a film that inspired Black Swan. It examines the psychological effects of fame and trying to break from the box your fans have put you into. The next two pieces are a short film about killing, and a short film about love. These are cinematic extrapolations from the series Decalogue, which is very famous on Letterboxd. I've watched all 10 episodes. I'd recommend you watch the whole series if you want to watch an episode a night. I mean, they're all less than 90 minutes. Uh, these two in particular, though, were made into longer versions that are still under 90 minutes, and are two of the best from the series, meaning they come from two of the best episodes of the 10 that this series has to offer. It's inspired to where each episode is about a commandment and the way that it is done. The writing is amazing. Then we have Videodrome by David Cronenberg, the body horror master. Videodrome explores the frightful attachment society has developed towards media and how it can change us as a society, even on the cellular level. 
Up next is Igmar Bergman's final film in this video, Hour of the Wolf. It's Bergman's only horror film and will make you wish he made more of them. Last but not least, it's the cream of the crop and the bell of the ball. Rashomon by one of my favorite directors, Ikira Kurosawa. Rashomon changed the way narrative structures were looked at in film and is absolutely timeless. Great performances and one that still leaves you in awe after it's done. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you check out all the videos that I mentioned. I hope that you find at least one recommendation here that you check out yourself. And if you do, let me know what you thought about it. And let me know what you think about any of these films if you've already watched some of them, whether you would recommend them, what you liked about it. And be sure to subscribe. Click that bell icon so you don't miss our next video. And I'll catch you on the flippity flip. Bye, y'all. Do you love movies, but how... If I've learned anything... Yeah.